Hi, everyone. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, my name is Diane Keough. I'm the executive director of the ITB2 Transmart Foundation, and I am thrilled to be able to kick off this year's program. The first thing I want to start out with is to let you know that um, we are celebrating our 17th year of supporting the clinical research informatics uh, community. Um, I know that some of the uh, original inventors of I2B2 are probably looking at this saying, how could that be? <laughs> how could that be? Um, but we really have been around for uh, 17 years, uh, still going strong. And as you hear through this program, um, there are some new major initiatives, very major initiatives, significant, that have chosen I2B2 to be part of, uh, of their program. So uh, I, I, I hope that um, this means that we're gonna continue for, uh, for a very long time moving forward. So uh, I, I wanna mention, so what is, what is the foundation? Very, very quickly, two major principles you know, uh, uh, of, of what we're trying to provide here. One is sustainability, sustainability of the software maintaining and enhancing the, the software um, over time. We have been able to, to um, uh, release <clears throat> uh, new releases of I2B2 and Transmart um, each year. Um, and we did this uh, as well this year. Um, so it's sustainability of the software, but it's also about the community. It's engaging and supporting and keeping the community together. So what the foundation does is it provides a platform for the user community. And so we have monthly calls and newsletters. We have these two annual symposiums, you know, one in the summer, one in the fall. We hope someday to get back to a, an in-person uh, meeting, although we'll always have a virtual component. Um, we host multiple working groups and we'll also spin up new working groups and support those working groups for, for new ideas um, as folks, uh, um, you know, want to get together and, and, and focus on specific things. Um, and as an example, we provided the communication support for the, the 4C consortium as that ramped up um, quickly. So we're able to, we're able to jump in and, and, and help new initiatives because we have the platform in place. Um, I have to tell you, it's been a banner year for the foundation. Last couple of years have been really good, but this last year particularly, we uh, received a second year of grant funding, um, compliments of Dell Giving, which allowed us to really do some very um, uh, new innovative things, but also do some fundamental things, um, which is really, really hard to do. For instance, you know, enhancing our documentation and easier implementation um, uh, um, uh, around our bundles of software to streamline adoption. Because if, if, if people don't understand it, they can't, there's no documentation that they can't understand it and they can't install it, they're not gonna use it. And so those bundles are really around I2B2 Transmart and, and also Shrine. Um, we finally were able to normalize the data models between I2B2 and Transmart, um, allowing users to take advantage of the functionality and analytical tools for each platform. Um, I2B2 and Transmart are complementary. That's why we pulled the two together as we formed the foundation. Um, and now I, I hear rumor that there's actually a major initiative that, that's talking about using the two platforms together, which will um, really be a wonderful use case uh, moving forward. We developed uh, Transmart Open Data, um, which, is, which is, includes data from, two, uh, at, at this point, 286 COVID studies that's, that's open data for, for people to use. You'll hear more about that in the program. And we launched a COVID authors website to support collaboration among authors of publications related to COVID. Um, and Griffin Weber will talk about that. And then lastly, um, we launched a data enclave, um, this is really working with Dell, um, that can be used as a model to host our applications to establish a digital twin. And um, Sean Murphy will talk more about that um, in this program. So a great year. Um, the program, I think you've, you've seen the agenda, but I just wanna mention, we've got a, a wonderful re a report from our global community. Um, work that is starting to um, hopefully ramp up um, in India. Um, and this came out of the, the uh, pandemic, the crisis in India and the fact that they were not able to, uh, they didn't have tools or a way to be able to, um, to measure or, or capture data um, for their, uh, their, their patients. Um, and also a report out of Africa, which is a well-established uh, program around kidney disease using the Transmart um, platform. 
we have a number of speakers um, around COVID-19 because uh, that's obviously the thing that, that people are focusing on. Um, I'll just mention one, there's late breaking news around uh, the NHLBI um, uh, OTA, which they're calling Recover, Researching COVID to Enhance um, um, Recovery. Um, and that, that's using the, that, that they've chosen the I2B2 data model for this initiative, which is, is, is actually um, huge and, and exciting. Um, so anyway, the, the, there's a session on new technologies, which um, you'll hear about. And then we'll jump into our foundation technical session where we'll talk about our roadmaps and we really wanna have an active discussion with the community. So the second day is a report out from our working groups um, all three working groups, uh, ontology, ETL, and user interface have done some significant work and we're, uh, we would like people to encourage people to join these um, working groups and also think about new groups that could be spun up. Um, and then the Shrine um, uh, group will get together and talk about, um, talk about Shrine, talk about the history, the architecture and some uh, recent new features, pretty exciting new features that have been added um, over the past year, and then talk about features that, that um, are being planned for for the open source community. And then a discussion about networks and where they will go. So a, a very um, a thanks to our, our contributing sponsors of academic medical centers and um, vendors who you know, support us, um, keep us going, uh, keep the, the, the foundation and the infrastructure around the foundation going. Um, also, a special thanks to Dell Technologies, uh, which is our, our corporate um, sponsor. Um, and uh, they've, they've really helped us over the past couple of years tremendously. Um, and then, of course, this is, this is sustaining sponsors, which are organizations that are the backbone of the foundation um, that provide in-kind support um, to help us uh, maintain the, the code and, and various things. We have, a, we have a terrific uh, board of directors. Um, it, it's a very, very important um, group of, of people that help um, uh, guide us. Um, there are two, about two thirds of the, the board is made up of uh, folks from academic medical centers across the US and Europe. And then um, a third are uh, folks from industry, which, um, which really add um, a lot of value to, um, to our um, our strategy and where we go. Um, we do have an open board seat. So if you're interested in nominating somebody, you can, um, there's a nomination form on our website. So feel free to, um, to fill that out and send that in. Uh, special thanks to the people behind the scenes, um, Desiree Flyer and Thomas uh, Naughton, who are really the unsung heroes who, who help manage this event. Um, and you know, everything from introducing speakers to managing Zooms and keeping us on schedule and live tweeting and keeping the, making sure the recordings and the slides are posted and they fix, we'll fix everything. And, and, and I have to tell you, uh, they, they do it all and it's just, it, it's, it's so much fun working with them. So thanks to these two guys. So now what I wanna do is I wanna introduce um, Zach um, and Zach won't let me actually read a bio, um, but let me just tell you, he's, he's one of the pioneers in this space. Um, and I've been working with him since the, the beginning of, of this 17 years ago, I guess. Um, he was the PI of the original um, grant where I2B2 was invented. Um, he, stayed, he stayed close to the, the foundation and serves as a chairman of our board. So Zach, I'm gonna turn this over to you. Thank you. So thank you for summarizing uh, that uh, those accomplishments to date. And I just really want to, first of all, welcome everybody to our uh, annual symposium. I, I really hope this is the last one where we are completely virtual and we can come back to uh, our regular uh, June meetings at Harvard where we get to uh, meet each other and uh, uh, talk both in the conference and around uh, drinks. So I'm gonna just focus on one particular set of accomplishments, which I think are at the heart of much of the excitement that uh, currently uh, animates the ITB2 community. And that's the COVID, uh, response to COVID, and how EHR informatics and EHR informaticians, electronic health record informaticians, 
have been really at the center of a public health response. Next. Diane. There, stop. So uh, what we, you know, as many others, I'm sure, I was watching around end of February, beginning of March, and we were beginning to hear, of course, about the cases in China and then in Europe. And from a US, United States uh, perspective, it was both disarming and anxiety provoking that all we really knew about the clinical course of this virus, viral infection, was gleaned from newspaper stories and from telephone calls with colleagues in uh, Europe and in China. That was it. Publications were lagging. And even in the publications, uh, we, there were very small numbers of patients and no clear clinical course had, had appeared in the literature, uh, certainly by late February. And I, as I am sure you were uh, waiting, I was waiting for uh, large governmental organizations to put together a large data response so we could immediately know what's going on so that we could show that we were really in a um, learning health system. And what became quickly apparent within days to me was that the response was going to be important but slow. It was going to be big effort to harmonize governance, this, that, and the other thing. Meanwhile, people were dying all over the globe. And so instead, what I did is I got together my Rolodex from our I2B2 academic users group. And I reached out by email to many of you on this call. And within a week, we had a, a project going on. We had our first Zoom. Zoom at the time was woo, a little bit a uh, new way of, uh, of uh, collaborating. And we had an international Zoom call on four days after I put out the email on a Friday morning. And we said, we need to figure out what's going on with these patients. And across a consortium of, uh, that included, I believe at that time, five countries, now nine countries, then five countries and about 130 hospitals. Now, well, uh, several, several hundred more hospitals we were able to put together in 30 days a clinical picture of what was happening to our patients and in the first day of admissions. That is, we saw the coagulopathy, we saw the inflammatory surge, we saw uh, the uh, myocarditis, all within the first week of hospitalization. In fact, within days of hospitalization. And we saw it across multiple countries, thanks to this effort of I2B2 informaticians uh, who understood the data, who knew how to get to the data, who with I2B2 and Transmart and OMOP had access to the data. And we were able to make that useful right away. Sadly, we were not the model because in fact, if people had looked at what we were doing and what we published within 30 days, within 30 days we had published, including the coagulopathy on MedArchive, the efforts to anticoagulate patients, which eventually became standard for uh, admitted severe patients, that anticoagulation didn't happen. It could have saved tens of thousands of lives at least. And I wanna note that although we published a med archive within 30 days, it was five months later that it was published in Nature Digital Medicine, also showing the, 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 the mismatch between the need for public health uh, uh, information dissemination and the pace of publications. Next. At the same time, there were a lot of others who started publishing EHR data, worldwide data. And while we were in this, those first 30 days, um, many of us said, what's going on here? How did they get hundreds more hospitals involved and were able to see the data for COVID across the world. 
So it turned out that those publications, first in the Lancet and then in the New England Journal of Medicine, was from a company, Surgisphere. And it, of course, it turned out those uh, data and those analyses were fake, fraudulent, didn't exist. And what do we conclude from that? A, that our leading publications uh, had not been well-schooled in distinguishing real from fact in terms of electronic health record data. That um, only a, in a group of real experts, such as those in the I2B2, Transmart, OMOP community, in fact, were close enough to the data to be able to both understand it with all its warts, extract it, and analyze it in a very, very short interval. And that became unambiguously clear. And that is something that those of us who care about public health will have to keep on recognizing lest we return all too easily to the bad old days where those who are the closest to the data end up furthest from the analysis and the messaging around that data. Next. As Diane noted, uh, the I2B2 data model and data tools have now become central to our public health efforts. This post-acute uh, post -acute surveillance of COVID uh, that is being led out of the NIH by the National Heart Lung Blood Institute has its, as its core for its na our national effort, the I2B2 data model. Furthermore, the entire cloud hosted environment, bringing genotype and phenotype together from uh, that is in the cloud, in, in this case, the Amazon Web Services Cloud um, that has an API derived from our I2B2 efforts called the picture interface. That's now standard as part of the effort and required, in fact, uh, for many of our efforts. Next. I just want to close uh, by saying, by reminding you, informaticians in this instance are not the uh, backseat uh, Greek chorus. We're not just nice to have people who do some post hoc analyses. As we showed in this public health emergency, but has been always true for all clinical care in this data intensive age. Informaticians are frontline front workers. Those of us who understand that take it very seriously. And it's a responsibility we have both towards us, towards our society, towards um, our healthcare systems, and just as importantly, to our trainees, that they understand this is not a purely academic exercise. This actually affects lives. Next slide, the uh, next uh, thing. And I just wanna quickly just show two publications that we that among many that came out of this 4C consortium, the one on top, the one that summarized our results in the first, the first 30 days, and the second one, just summarizing everything that every reader, including the editors of some of our most important journals should know about electronic health records, but may be afraid to ask. So you're in it for a real treat today with our I2B2 Academic Users Group's uh, Symposium. Uh, I've just touched on one small topic where I2B2 has been incredibly and continues to be increasingly uh, influential and relevant, but you'll hear more today. Thank you, Diane, and on with the show.